Welcome back to Wii News. Facebook might be a place for you to keep your friends updated on your thoughts and feelings or simply for you to just mark other people's lives. But now, Interpol is reaching out to FB and Twitter to help in the search of for the world's most wanted criminals. <laughs> If you are logged on or signed into MySpace, Twitter or Facebook, Interpol needs your help. The International Police Organization, in a press release posted to their website, reached out to the international community to ask for assistance in hunting the world's most wanted fugitives. According to reports, in early May, investigators from around the world met in Lyon, France, Interpol's headquarters, to pool information on the most difficult cases. Operation Infrared, as it was called, however proved only 24% effective, with only 107 of the 450 targets arrested or located. Martin Cox, Operation Infrared Coordinator and Assistant Director of Interpol's Fugitive Investigative Support Unit, admitted that there was no new information on the majority of outstanding cases. This has prompted the call for all Internet surfers to aid the international police in their efforts in instituting justice throughout the globe. Social networkers are especially invited to help in the manhunt. It should be added, though, that Operation Infrared was successful in capturing some high-profile cases, including supermodel Angie Saclamente Valencia, wanted for and arrested for drug trafficking in Argentina. Also, suspected currency counterfeiter Muamba Munanga of the Democratic Republic of Congo was arrested in South Africa on June 26. The search continues, however, for the other 343 suspects and criminals still at large. It's been two weeks since the Prime Minister's countrywide cleanup campaign. Well, the Literacy Committee, a group of young people who've come together to fight the national littering disease, are hosting a beach cleanup in Lower Manzanilla this Sunday. We News spoke with Matthew Wyatt, President of Literacy, about young people taking responsibility for the environment. On the 18th of, of July, that's this Sunday, Literacy is organizing a beach cleanup of the Manzanilla stretch. Unfortunately, we won't be able to cover as much as we want on the day because of time constraints and it's a very large. We wanted initially to coincide with the National Cleanup and Beautify TNT Day, which was the 27th of June, but due to a lack of time and proper financing, we had to postpone until this day, the 18th. We literacy, we're just a group of young students, some of us are in university, some of us are in secondary school, and we are just concerned about the environment and the way, the way we as Trinidadians, as citizens, treat our environment. The reason why we have excessive flooding, when these waterways are clogged, they come onto the beaches, down the rivers, and they just litter the beaches with all the plastics, and then in turn, they affect the entire environment, circle, the aquatic and terrestrial life. We chose, we chose Manzanilla because, first of all, we wanted to coincide with the National Cleanup and Beautify Day. We didn't get to do that, but we thought that on the day itself, there would be a lot of people on the most obvious spots, the Maracas, the, Shag the Shagamas, the Shagwells. So we wanted to go where we thought no one would have thought of. And also, because of the, the large number of young people that we're targeting, like we have been looking at 400 people right now, Manzanilla would have been the most ideal place for 400 people to stretch out on. More and more suspected dengue cases are popping up around the country. Here are some tips to keep you and your family safe and some of the symptoms that you should look out for. Dengue strikes people with low levels of immunity. The virus is contracted from the bite of a striped Aedes aegypti mosquito that has previously bitten an infected person. The mosquito flourishes during rainy seasons, but can breed in water-filled flower pots, plastic bags, and cans year-round. One mosquito bite can inflict the disease. The virus is not contagious and cannot be spread directly from person to person. There must be a person to mosquito to another person pathway. After being bitten by a mosquito carrying the virus, the incubation period ranges from 3 to 15 days before the signs and symptoms of dengue appear. Dengue starts with chills and headaches, pain upon moving the eyes and lower backache. Painful aching in the legs and joints also occur during the first hours of illness. Fever temperatures rise quickly, reaching as high as 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius. 
Also, there is a relatively low heart rate and low blood pressure to be seen. The eyes become reddened, a flushing or pale pink rash comes over the face and then disappears. The glands or lymph nodes in the neck and groin are often swollen. Fever and other signs of dengue last for two or four days, followed by a rapid drop in temperature with profuse sweating. This precedes a period with normal temperature and a sense of well-being that lasts about a day. A second rapid rise in temperature follows. A characteristic rash appears along with the fever and spreads from the extremities to cover the entire body except the face. The patient's palms and soles may be bright red and swollen. So, World Cup has come to an end. Well, for the men anyway. Here's Jomo Williams to bring us an update from the world of cricket. The Caribbean T20 cricket tournament is carded for July 22nd to 25th in Barbados and from the 28th to the 31st in Trinidad. Set to feature eight teams playing in 16 matches, it promises to be an exciting affair and will feature a guest appearance from the Canadians. While every team carded to play in the affair are feeling rather confident in their chances, Guyana must be riding a wave of excitement knowing that star batsman Ramnore Sauron will be fit and ready to lead their squad into the competition. The West Indies batsman has endured a string of injuries over the last nine months. Sawan jarred his back on the tour of Australia last November and was sidelined for close to three months. More recently, he was sidelined during the home series against South Africa when he pulled a hamstring while batting in the second one day. His return to top-level action as captain of the Guyanese team will surely be a welcome boost for them. However, the name of Shivnarayan Chandapal is noticeably absent from the team roster for the 2020 competition. The circumstances surrounding Chandapal's omission are being kept under wraps by the Guyana Cricket Board, but word on the street is that Chandapal will instead be playing for Lancashire in the very lucrative English County Championships. Chandapal's absence will leave Guyana without one of their star batsmen, but with other names such as Narsing Dionarang, Travis Dowlin, and Sunarain Chattagoon still in the list, it should at least make for some very interesting cricket. This is Jomo Williams for We News. We're taking another quick break now, so stay tuned because when we get back, we talk women's football. <laughs> <laughs> 